Why, hello everybody, it is your girl here. Now I know it's been a hot minute before I actually made a Visteria video. Now, I totally understand there are some people that actually quit the game to rejoin the game to see this new update. Now, if you're like me, unfortunately, who disappeared from this game for a couple of months and are logging on for the very first time within this week, you kind of notice that the game has drastically changed for the better. So for the very first time, we have been introduced to subclasses. Now I'm going to break down each subclass to you guys because I know there are some people who are actually really confused about subclasses and what each subclass technically does within the game. So we have warriors, mages, and we have rogues pretty much. So those three classes have three other subclasses that you can actually choose from. So for everybody who is literally logging on for the very first time to Visteria, I totally understand you guys' pain because I was completely confused by all of this too. But if you've played previous RPG games within the past, these subclasses are actually going to be really easy for you guys to really understand. But for those who are probably starting Visteria and you're making your way up to the level 30, which is the requirement to pick your subclass, um, this hopefully will help you guys understand what each subclass does. That way you guys can pick the correct one based on your playstyle and so on and so forth. So, like I said, there are three classes. Each of those classes have three subclasses that you can pick from. With the mage, we have warlock, a cleric, and sorcerer. For the warrior, we have a knight, we have a berserker, and we have a paladin. So for the rogue, we actually have something called a trickster, assassin, and a ranger. So each class is going to be significantly different from the other. So we're going to start off with the mage. So we have the warlock. The warlock is a necromancer type of class within Visteria. The closest comparison that I can use from previous RPGs that I've played in the past is Dorian Pavis from Dragon Age. He's exactly what a necromancer is. He studies in dark magic, just like the spells that you could cast on Visteria as a warlock. Dorian Pavis actually does the same thing. He induces fear in his enemies by casting spirits and reducing attacks for, you know, your party members. And he can also cast positive stats within your team, increasing speed, they can increase defense, so on and so forth. So if you kind of like necromancers and you just like dark magic, this is actually really nice. So just keep in mind though, once you pick your class, you are not able to pick another class. You are stuck with that class. So the spells casted by a warlock are Dark Ritual, Pillage Vitality, Dark Pulse, and Simulacrum. The second subclass for the uh, mage is called a Cleric. So to easily compare this to from another RPG game would be a Night Enchanter type of class. This class specifically uses holy and healing and light based moves. Uh, technically Dragon Age doesn't have a set cleric type within the game, but the closest person that I can personally think of that is somewhat like this is Vivian. Vivian is exactly what a knight enchanter would pretty much be. She uses light moves such as spirit blade and a defending blade. And this is all based off of magic. So she uses like pretty much light based attacks to create her own uh, sword, just purely off of magic. And she can also call into spirits to restore health to your allies and pretty much reviving them. So this is that she uses focus in order to revive the players. In Visteria, we use intelligence. So in comparison, they're pretty much almost the same thing. But with all mages having spirit abilities within Dragon Age, they can technically heal all party members and protect players and reduce attack damage. Sadly, this doesn't technically work for Visteria, just for the cleric though. The moves that clerics can use are Heal, Resurrect, and Flare. And the final subclass for the mage is a Sorcerer. 
Now this is rather interesting because I don't necessarily see many sorcerers within Vesteria. So when I do happen to run into one, I always I'm always surprised because I don't see that many sorcerers. It's usually either uh, it's actually just cleric. I only see clerics in the game. I don't see sorcerers, and I don't see that many necromancer types of uh, classes in this game. But sorcerers are an elemental base class, so they technically use nature. They pretty much. Uh, use the earth they use anything around them it's earth based or you know water based fire based stuff like that and the only person i can think to use that i've personally used as an elemental sorcerer is solus now i know all of the mages within dragon age can technically use elemental based classes but i like to have each class specifically set to each character so solus he can technically use, you know, fire, ice, water, and earth, pretty much. So the elementals, these are all elementals. So the moves sorcerers can use of Asteria are called Frost Call, Earth Call, Meteor Strike. So if you are a fan of sorcerers and you want to throw rocks and use ice, sorcerer might be for you. However, again, I don't see that many sorcerers with the game, so it's fairly rare to see these be played in Vesteria. And it's always interesting to run into them when, when I'm in a game. And our next class is Warrior. Now, for the Warriors, again, there are three classes that you could choose from. Now, each one is going to be significantly different from the other, so make sure you guys pick the class that is best suited for you. The first class that we're going to start off is with a Knight. The knight is pretty much a sword and shield base class within Dragon Age. They clearly use their sword and shield, and the perfect example that I can use for this is Cassandra Pentagast. So with Cassandra, she's, pre she's pretty much a buff female character within the game. She's powerful, she has great defense, she's just so resilient as a character within this game, and that is pretty much what I would want to compare to uh, the knights on Vesteria. Vanguard and Sword and Shield are kind of mixed within the knight class from Dragon Age to Vesteria, which I personally think is awesome. So if you think of Sword and Shield, just remember that you are a resilient player within this game. So the moves that a knight can use is called Inspired, Taunt, and Shield Charge. Our next class is called a Paladin. Now, this class is a little bit more harder for me to pinpoint, mainly because there are no classes that I've seen within Dragon Age that are warriors but can use magic. This is kind of different for me to see, and it's really hard for me to pinpoint. And I know I'm going to be using a previous example from Dragon Age, and honestly, the only person that I can think of that is a mage but can also wield a sword is Vivian. Vivian doesn't really classify as a warrior since she is a mage, but she can use magic to create a sword and she can become close range. Now, again, it's completely hard for me to compare this class to Dragon Age because I'm not used to seeing this into games. However, they can use magic to regain health and for their teammates. So if you are a fan of a warrior, but also want to be somewhat of a mage a little bit, make sure you pick this class. So the moves that a, a paladin can use, they're called Smite, Rebuke, and Prayer of Comfort. And the final class for the warrior is called the Berserker. By far my favorite, mainly because I use this pretty much in all RPG games. The specific class within Vesteria uses two swords within battle, and it hits hard. Since Berserker shares most abilities within the Warrior class, the best I could compare this class due to its remembrance within Dragon Age is Iron Bull. Now, I know he doesn't hold two weapons, but again, his class doesn't match the Berserker. Since I know most of these classes kind of feed off of each other, so if you have, like for example, Cassandra, who's a sword and shield, technically, Iron Bull can feed off of that. But you kind of don't want to mix those categories together, so Iron Bull is probably the most closest category I can put him on as a Berserker. So this class is mainly for people 
that really like, really, really like strength and want to use two weapons within the game. So you can't heal yourself. You technically can't heal yourself as a Berserker. You can uh, pretty much use Warcry. That increases the morale and the attack for you and your allies. And you can use a Ferocious Assault, which is a Slash of Fury using both swords. So you do double the damage. So this class is one of the best for a warrior. And this is by far the favorite for every single warrior. Now, if you use the other two classes within this game, that's totally fine because you might play better as a Sword and Shield or the previous one that I mentioned before. Again, I use the Berserker because that's pretty much what I use and that's what I usually prefer in all RPG games. And the final class. The final class would be a Rogue. Now, there are three subclasses within this category that you can choose from. The first one being a Trickster. Now, a trickster is basically somebody who uses potions or traps in order to defeat their enemy. And the best person that I can think of for this category is Sarah. Sarah is a rogue within Dragon Age who's technically, she's got a lot of stuff up her sleeves. She's an archer. She's a huge prankster within the game that it's almost impossible to not use her as a trickster. So Sarah has a habit of playing pranks and tricks on people. But she is trained within archery. Her ability tree allows her the following. Double daggers, archery, sabotage, and tempest. Making all rogues within Dragon Age technically able to be used as examples, but due to Sarah's playful persona, she is perfect for this subclass. The moves that a trickster can use is a trick trap, switch strike, and disengage. The next class is assassin. This subclass moves within the shadows, stealthy and quiet, and hits without a trace of sound. The perfect person that I can think of is Cole. Cole is a ghost within the shadows, walking unnoticed through the crowds. He can slit an enemy's throat before they even realized he's there and slip away, never to be seen again. Those few who do notice him forget he ever existed, and Cole isn't certain that he does exist. His moves are somewhat familiar to the moves within Assassin classes within Vestira, which are Shadow Walk, Shadow Flurry, Step Through Shadow, and the final class within this whole category are Rangers. So these are pretty much the archers within Vestiria. And what better way to use Sarah as another example? She uses her arrows to take her enemies down in a pinch. Just like the rangers within this class, they also share the power of long range. The moves that rangers can use are Hail of Arrows, Ranger Stance, and Ricochet. Each class within this whole thing are so significantly different from each other that it's almost hard to pinpoint which one that you actually want to play as. And because that you're, you're not able to go back on your decision, it's almost groundbreaking and it's really crazy to pick out which class you really want to play as. So hopefully these examples that I've used from previous games that I've personally played kind of help you decide exactly what you want to use and it will hopefully help the people kind of decide what they want to pick rather than hear popular choice. Because I know a lot of people just pick certain classes because of popular choice within Vesteria. So make sure once you reach level 30 you go to your subclass's location and find the correct person in order to become that subclass. And keep in mind, once you pick that subclass, you will not be able to go back. So just make sure that you just kind of give it a thought, do some research on your subclass, even kind of look up Dragon Age or other RPG games to get an example of what kind of subclass that you would like to play as. And it does help to look this up too because you may not know what kind of subclass you like until you look it up. And I know new players won't get this tier list, especially if they are brand new to RPG games. I know this is a kind of an overwhelming type of categorized um, list to go down through and if you're not experienced in RPGs and subclasses I know this is going to be kind of a lot to take in but again like I said make sure you just kind of do some research 
find out which category you would like to be a part of and I would highly suggest probably not listening to popular opinion because sometimes those popular opinions are not something that you kind of want to play as. I know a lot of people believe that archers are the best category within this game because of how easy they play, but maybe there are some people within the game that actually want a challenge. And I believe playing as a warrior gives you that perfect challenge that you kind of want to get within Vesteria. So just keep in mind, just do your research. And I know some of you guys have been gone from the game for about five, six months, and you're coming back to a whole new different game. And it, it's kind of crazy for me too. So the updates really changed how the game worked and how the game felt overall. So hopefully you guys can understand how this works. I will be making more videos based off of where to go, how to gain better XP, where to get gold, because this, this, this game has changed my previous videos that I've done in the past to something entirely different. So what I may have explained in my past videos may not be applicable to the current updates now. So hopefully this actually helped you guys out. If you have more questions on Vesteria, you can shoot a comment within our comment selection down below or you can actually join our Discord where we have a Vesteria section and you guys can ask your questions there. Until then, I will See you guys in the next video. Vapor Baby is out. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.